guys, thanks for coming to the channel and watching along. Before the video gets started, uh, you can see I've got the flight completed here. Uh, I did run into a couple of issues with filming and uh, my hands being kind of out of frame. I'm I'm working on that. I've got a new lens that I've been working with and that leaves me a very small field of view. So I'm working on trying to get my hands positioned and get the camera positioned around the hook a little better. So uh, if, if that is something that you know concerns you a little bit, uh, I am working on it. Um, also, uh, this fly was a little more on the complicated side because I didn't have uh, the right length of orange hackle. Um, I do have some schlappen, but schlappen is typically much longer and webbier. And for this one uh, being a 1-0 hook, um, I needed some small stuff with a nice taper and I didn't have a whole lot in that package to work with. So uh, I did what I could and uh, hopefully you guys uh, like the result. So let's get on with the video. Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. This is your first time here. Welcome. I'm glad to have you. So today I'm going to tie the Thunder and Lightning Salmon Fly. Now this fly has uh, it's been tied by quite a few people over the years. Uh, the version I'm going to do is the Kelson version. Now the one that I'm holding in my hand uh, was tied on a Partridge CS6 blind eye hook. Uh, and the hook that I'm going to use today is a Partridge low water single. Uh, it's a size 1.0 with the up eye and that does have the return eye on it as you can see so the Irish version of this has blue yellow and red in the wing uh, but the version that uh, Kelson lists in his book has just mallard in the wing so that's what we're gonna go for is the, uh, the Kelson now um, if you look at Mary Orvis Marbury and her version, she had teal in the wing and then mallard. So there are a couple of variations. I happen to like this one. So the tinsel I'm using is a small uh, Vivas French tinsel. It's actually supposed to be gold. Uh, twist, but I do not have any gold twist. I only have silver. So we are going to just use gold tinsel. Now I'm putting this right up to that eye. And if you've watched my previous videos, uh, I've talked about the return eye where this makes a little bit of a step on the body, especially being a full floss body fly. Uh, you want to try to blend that into the rest of the hook and the rest of the fly. So we're going to do that right here. This doesn't completely take care of that, but this will kind of help kind of start that. And I'm going to take this back. Just about to that barb. Maybe a little bit before it. <clears throat> now there's a yellow floss tag on this. So typically the tip gets tied in first. And then you tie that off and then tie in the tag. But I'm going to add a little bit to the tag. Um, I like adding a little bit extra flash to it. So how I'm going to do that is by wrapping the tinsel around the floss after I've um, wrapped the floss on there. Just a hair, yeah, right about there is good. And the so silk floss that I'm using is uh, the Ephemera 54 Dean Street uh, <clears throat> silk floss. There's no label on this one, I apologize. I'll have links to these. Um, some of these in the in the description. 
lot of these you can just do a quick Google search and you can come up with plenty of different suppliers for them. Wrap that up and get it out of the way. I did wash my hands right before doing this. Uh, I still don't have any gloves. So the silk is going to have to hopefully hold together. butt section on here, or uh, tag section on. And I'm just going to wrap some of this up to kind of help with that evening out of the body. Well, the floss doesn't add a whole lot. Um, the combination of the floss and the thread does help. And we take the tinsel for the tip. Make sure they're touching turns. And do three wraps of that to, that are touching. And then from there I'm going to split off and just do a couple wraps. there poses a small bit of a problem so we're going to rearrange this a little bit. What happens there is if you stop your floss on top and when you go to put your tail in it, tie in your tail, your tail is going to get popped up in the air and you don't want it to be popped up. We'd rather have it kind of sticking straight out. So let's Rearrange our wraps just a little bit. That's not helping. There we go. Now we have it so it ends kind of on the underside. I'm just going to build this up around here just a little bit, so I've got a little spot for the tail to mount to. couple of tails that I picked for this, a couple golden pheasant crests. And we 
just want to measure out just about how big we want it. By tying them both in together. See how that goes. Proportioning on the tail is actually very quite important. If you don't get the proportioning on the tail quite right, that'll set off the rest of the fly. Because the wing length gets set to the tail as well. Um, so if your tail length is off or your tail length is too much, um, you could wind up actually setting your wing up too high. You could wind up having issues uh, even getting the wing to set properly. And the shape of the fly can actually be affected. I think I'm sort of happy with this. See what it looks like when I wrap the whole body up. That might actually be beneficial, keeping the body nice and even. And kind of clip away any of this. Like that. We'll take a couple, we'll take care of a few of these little stragglers, these uh, stray fibers that don't want to join the group later. And that one there, we can just trim them out. So now for the butt, I'm tying our ostrich hurl, so I'm using a little bit of wax on the thread to make that just sticky enough to hold that ostrich hurl.
Motor trill has a tendency to want to slip. So having a little bit of a base of uh, some wax can really help with keeping that from going anywhere. When you tie your ostrich trail in, you want to make sure that the flat side, that uh, that quill is facing forward and the fuzzy flat part is facing the back of the fly as you wrap it. So when I tie it in, I usually tie it in just enough to be able to make the bend. And then just overlap each turn. And as you overlap each turn, you create the uh, nice, nice button. It's actually a bit on the thick side. I kind of like it. Okay. Now the body tinsel again is gold. Um, so I'm going to be using the Vivas in a large this time. section here. Again, tying that right up to that turn eye. Kind of slowly take it and turn it um, around the shank a little so that way by the time I get to the butt where it's going to start you can see it's kind of down in the it's past the uh, six o'clock position I'd actually say that's more like if you're looking at the fly from the front it's kind of like the five o'clock position maybe 530 ish now when you start to wrap it, that first wrap, you're not seeing where it comes from. You're not seeing it sticking out from the, uh, the floss. And the hackle for this is a uh, orange. Now I don't have any um, orange saddle. So uh, since I don't have that, I have to do, uh, go with slapping. So I found the best tapered one that I had. That was the right size for this fly, I think. And um, I'm going to tie that in back here. Now this starts right from the butt, not two turns up. A lot of salmon flies start at the second turn of tinsel. Um, this one, the hackle, is actually going to start right here at the, t at the first turn. that all the way forward. And 
right now is a good time to look at the shape of your body. You should be developing a very gradual taper towards the front here. But everything right here should line up well. So what I'm going to do first, before, uh, before I wrap anything else, I'm going to use a little bit of underbody material. I'm going to get this tinsel out of the way for you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, just grab a little bit of uni stretch. Now this is actually woolly nylon. I've used the uni stretch and added the uh, woolly nylon. I know clipping off the main thread it adds an extra step, and but like I've said before. Um, this fly isn't for speed, it's not for fishing, so taking my time and making sure that I do things somewhat right. Um, that's a little bit more important, so. Okay, so if you look through, adding, adding this, uh, underbody material will also help you see a little bit better the rest of the fly. And you can see the body and you can see where you kind of need to add a little bit to make things blend better. Getting there. Let me just make this a little bit flatter. Now, what I'm doing, as you can, if you can see how flat this is and how much it's spread out, that's so that way it fills in any little um, peaks and valleys between the thread that might be there. And by rocking it back and forth like this, that ensures that it stays spread out and lines up right where I want it to be. Okay. So next is black flosses on the body. So instead of tying on black thread, well, yeah, I guess I'll tie in the black thread first just to make sure that floss stays. Since I don't have gloves, I'm going to use the floss on the bobbin method. It adds extra steps once again, because now I'm literally tying in to put on the floss, and then I'm going to whip finish and get rid of the, the bobbin again. Okay, so if this is your first time on the channel and you're new here, there's a couple different ways of wrapping silk floss. 
One of them is by hand and using your fingers, um, like I did with the yellow floss in the rear. However, with black floss, you know, skin particles, dirt, dust, um, anything, it really shows up. So, I don't want a chance using my hands on the whole body since there is going to be a lot of it. Um, instead, I just chose to uh, put the silk floss onto a bobbin spool. And then we're just going to wrap it on that way. That keeps my hands off of the floss. <clears throat> and I still have somewhat control over the floss and how it wraps. I can keep it flat. I can make sure that they're touching turns properly. So the silk floss that I am using is uh, a Japanese embroidery silk. Uh, I don't know exactly the brand name. Uh, I'm thinking it's JEC, which also stands for Japanese embroidery silk. Um, but I don't know that for 100% certainty. So now you just take these uh, these turns and you just slowly touching turns all the way back and every couple of every couple of wraps when you start to see your thread isn't spreading out anymore instead tightening up you got to spin your your bobbin counterclockwise a little bit and you'll see that uh, your floss will start to flatten out again and that band will get wider which is what you want. You want it to lay down flat and smooth. You can use rayon floss for this as well. Rayon works actually pretty well for it. Um, but I only recently started using silk floss and the one thing I can say is that the color on silk floss is much different. If you look at uh, black rayon um, versus silk, the black rayon actually looks a bit more on the grayish side. I don't know if that translates on camera but uh, in person under the light you can definitely see the difference. It's not as crisp I guess would be the right word for it. And that goes with just about any of the other colors in silk versus rayon. But rayon is great to learn with. Um, rayon's, you know, it's a little bit more affordable. Uh, it's easy to find. You can get rayon, so, or rayon floss on you know, eBay or just about any fly shop has it. Um, so, but if you want to try your hand at silk, you know, there's, uh, there are Japanese silks out there you can get, which are great. Um, you can also get these, um, French silks, uh, the Ephemera. Le Garden makes one, which is really good. Um, the Ephemera is put off by 54 Dean Street. I use quite a bit of that, actually. I do, I do quite like it. You know what? I'm going to go a little bit farther. Hopefully I don't regret it. I've had an issue lately with crowding the eye. I'm not sure why. Okay. Tied up pretty good. Let's tie it off. Silk work is done. So this is uh some used this earlier. This is just an agate burnisher. Uh, I think it was used for like it's supposed to be for like jewelry or gold or gold leaf and stuff like that. But uh I got it off of Amazon. It was like seven or eight bucks and um Having a, a burnishing stone like this, or if you can find a dog tooth burnishing, it's like a, it looks like almost like a pen with a dog tooth piece off of it. Um, that works really, really great. 
but this one works just as good. And then we'll wrap our tinsel. I'm going to have anywhere between five and, say, six turns on your fly. Let's just rewrap that again, shall we? Oh, this piece of one piece of hackwards doesn't want to cooperate. And then the last one, we can end right up under there, that's good. I always cut that a little bit long. So that way if I have to go back and rewrap the tinsel again for whatever reason, something just doesn't go right, I'll have that little bit of a tag to grab onto while I do it. I don't foresee any issue here, but just in case. All right. And now, we'll spread our hackle out just like that so it's all perpendicular from the rackus. Now you can take it and you can double it over and fold it before you start to wrap or you can do it as you wrap which is what I'm going to do. And I hope I have Oh boy, I've got broken hackles. See how that affects the fly here. All right, well, this is a prime example of really bad planning on my part. 
as you can see this hackle did not taper very much at all um, well unfortunately folks I'm going to tell you right now I'm not happy with this so um, I am going to leave this in I am going to go back I'm going to put in a different hackle and I will see you back at this point uh, when I get there All right, so I've got the new hackle wrapped on, and I've just pulled away the tip of that tinsel. So now when I wrap that, it doesn't bulk up on me. So now I can go ahead and do one more wrap on the hackle. Actually, I'm going to leave that right where it is, so that way we can get the throat in. I'm just pulling away a couple of the uh, hackle fibers. Pull them off of that bracket so that way when I tie them in, when I tie it off right here, it doesn't bunch up and look kind of funky. All right, so now you can see I have more of a taper here, so it's more of a, um, if you look at the hackle spread out, it has more of a Christmas tree shape. That's more of what we're looking for with our hackle. I'm going to just go through here. What I'm doing now is just kind of folding some of these down along the body, along the tinsel. The idea is to get the majority of them sweeping downward. Let me keep just doing this. And eventually get them to pull downward. And you'll get some up top here that are just going to be stubborn and not going to want to lay down for you. And those troublemakers, I just pull them out of the way. This also helps give you a cleaner look. You can see the body a little bit more. Especially on a display fly. This was a fishing fly, you know, there's really no need to burnish the floss or anything like that. The fish aren't going to really care. Now back here towards the very end here where you started, be very careful if you choose to pluck these. The rackets at this part, right at the very tip here, is very fragile. And you can actually wind up pulling that out. And break it off and well then I'm going back and doing more hackle and I don't really have a whole lot of hackle that's for this size fly uh, in this color so I have some on order but uh, right now the schlappen is all I've got and schlappen is rather long um, it doesn't offer a whole lot of variety okay so now that we've got these tied in Let's go ahead and get the, uh, the throat in, which I don't have J that's long enough. I I went through and I checked a couple of different um, feathers, and I, I just don't have J long enough. So 
I will be using a uh, guinea fowl feather. So for the guinea fowl we're going to check the length and we don't want it to be longer than this one but we don't want it to be shorter. We want it to be the same length as what you just wrapped for the end, the back end of that um, body hackle. So we're going to go through and check a few feathers here. Pull the length down, uh, fibers out on it. And then line that up. That's still a bit long. Oh, that's very long. Okay. See, when you buy strong guinea fowl, uh, it does come with a variety of sizes, but it doesn't always come with all the sizes that you may need. That's why if you have the opportunity to buy a skin, if you're going to be tying a lot of these kind of style flies, uh, and you have the opportunity to get a skin, there's a good one. Um, I recommend trying to do that. You know, get a get a full guinea skin. Um, get it in like the most common color that you're going to use. Uh, I've got one in natural. I should get one in in blue as well, um, especially since it's a J sub, and I do actually use it quite a bit. All right, so we're going to tie that in, and then I'm going to fold it back. And all that does is just kind of locks that feather into place. Oh no. Okay. I'm going to snip my uh, body hackle. Now the guinea fowl. You also want to double that. Let's Double that as we wrap. Doesn't look great at the moment, but let's uh, fold this down a bit. I'm just using my thread to go over it like that, over the top, just to help pinch it down a little bit. Remove a couple more of these troublemakers, as I call them. Wink your fingers a little bit. A little saliva on there. And it kind of helps straighten those out a little. And I can see there's a couple of guinea feathers right here, or guinea barbs that are kind of getting mixed into that orange. I'm going to get them out of there. If you're going to remove them, you want to get them out now so that way 
later on you're not messing with them too terribly much. Okay. All right, so there's the lower head.